this call in particular, I'm really just going to focus on um, basics, like very, very basics of mindset, basics of things that you need to be doing in order to be successful with your business. So because we're teaching, we're doing this seriously, Success Club. So these are every, these are all the people on Project Fearless that are in Success Club currently. So myself, Kat Falcone, Jesslyn Jella, Suzanne Carver, Katie Cerrone, Kylie Joliker, and Brenda Russo. Badass. It's the 12th of the month, and you guys are all in Success Club. And when I look at that list, I see that there are a ton more people that are on their way. And it is the Team Cup, and so I do suggest that you strive really hard you know, to support your team and create points for your team and make sure that you all get in with at least five so that you can win silly bobbleheads of Autumn Calabrese um, and, you know, other special stuff. And it just means that we're all building our businesses. And when you think about it, when you make Success Club, it's not just about, you know, okay, I've got five points, I'm in Success Club, look at me. Success Club is aptly named because when you make Success Club, it means you're adding people to your business. And when they start adding people and they make success club, it means they're doing well at adding people to their business, which means you're putting a lot more volume in your business. You're also making yourself um, on track to be elite. An elite coach makes an extra $500 a year. So focusing on success club for you and your coaches will get you there. It will also make you get to your rank, which has bonuses. Success Club is the basis for everything we do, and it's brilliant that it's just this small little thing that we can shoot for each month rather than looking at the grand scope of things. So by getting into Success Club, you will be successful, and your job is to teach your coaches how to also be successful. So tell them the importance of getting into Success Club. All right, new Emeralds. We have Andrea, Sarah, and Katie. So three Emerald coaches um, <clears throat> this week, which is just crazy. And I think two of these are Meg, so nice job, Meg. And success starters. So what is a success starter? Success starter is somebody who makes Success Club their first month as a coach. They get a call with Carl Deichler, which is awesome because he spouts off some really cool stuff and motivates you and gets you going. Um, and so you all should have, you both should have received your emails that said that, Dakota and Amanda. And um, it's also a great starting point because it just means two more months in Success Club and you get your free ticket to Summit. All right, so let's start in. Treat your biz like a biz. You know, we all come into this with different whys, but many of us have a financial why. Many of us want freedom. So what provides freedom? Money. So really, you know, what do you have to do to make money. You don't make, you don't do a hobby to make money. You know, you work your business or you work at your job to make money. So you need to treat your business like a business and make sure that you are actually taking the time and doing the things that need to be done because nobody else will. It's your business. So practicing the three vital behaviors, invite, invite, invite every single day, do your workout, drink your Shakeology, be proof that the product works and, you know, do your personal development. And I can't stress the personal development part because none of the other stuff works unless you're doing your personal development. So those are the three vital behaviors and they're called vital because again, if you're doing those correctly, you'll get in the success club and you'll be successful. Power hour every day. I know it just says ever. Power hour every day. Um, so <laughs> do a power hour every day. Every day you are not doing a power hour, your business goes backwards. It doesn't stay the same, it goes backwards. You have to stay ahead of the game. You have to continue reaching out and continue doing those behaviors that every single day make you successful. So what are those behaviors that you do during a power hour? Reach out to new people, five at least. Post to your Facebook page. Come up with a hook. Make a list of the people who liked your Facebook posts from the day before. Friend new people. Those are things that you need to be doing every single day. And the invite part of that is not something you can skip. You need to be doing that. And we've got documents in the file section that you can go to that will help you stay on track while you're doing your power hour and really list that all out for you right in the file section of Project Fearless. Reach out to your coach when you need help. So I was talking with a few of my coaches today and I was stressing the importance and I was actually talking to one of the Star Diamond coaches on the team and we were talking about how to get your coaches to be successful and how to help your coaches get the knowledge that they need and how to make sure that you're doing the right things to lead them as a coach. 
And sometimes that can be overwhelming. And sometimes you feel like you're not doing a good enough job. And I can tell you that in the beginning of this process for myself, I wanted it. You know, I wanted what my coach had. So I agreed. I said to him, I will do whatever you tell me to do. And, you know, I say, you know, maybe make a pledge to yourself and commit the same thing to your upline coach and say that to them. I will do whatever you tell me because they have your best interest in mind and they're in a spot where you want to be eventually. So go ahead and listen to them and commit to that. But reach out to your coach because they don't have enough time to go and check in with every single person every day to make sure that they have everything that they need. And you're never bugging them. When you're reaching out to them and you're asking them for help, because you have a question, it means you're building your business and they love that and they have no problem spending the time helping you. You know, so if you're doing stuff right, you will have questions every day. This isn't a business where you just know everything right up front. There's definitely a learning curve. Um, but just fail forward and, you know, try to, to do those basic behaviors every single day, those power hours every day. And as you're doing them, you're going to have questions. Maybe you don't know how to word something. Maybe you don't know how to answer a question. Maybe you don't know how to deal with an objection. Um, maybe you go to sign a coach and they already are a customer of somebody else so you can't send them an enroller. Um, there's tons of things that come up each time that you're talking to new people. And every time you ask a question, you're one step further to becoming an expert in your business. So make sure that you're asking those questions and reaching out to your upline. If you're a new coach, make sure that you're asking for time with your coach, that you're spending time on a Zoom call with them at least once a week, you know, reviewing what you're doing, asking questions, having them look at your conversations for you and seeing how those are going. Because if you're doing those three vital behaviors and you're posting to Facebook and you're reaching out every single day and you're not getting results, I'm telling you it's your conversations and something's going wrong there and it helps to have another set of eyes on there. Also, there's a Gaptivity tracker in the back office too. And this is why we call it a Gaptivity tracker because it'll show you over the course of a week the areas of your business that you're lacking in a specific behavior, which is much easier for us as coaches to look at and say, oh, well, this is what's happening, so let's take a peek here. Or to say, okay, you've done all of these things that you're supposed to do every single day for the last seven days and still something isn't happening. So let's dig deeper. And it could be your conversations or maybe it's the type of posts that you're doing or you're not posting enough on Facebook and that sort of thing. So that helps us to help you and it helps yourself as well. So make sure you're reaching out to your coach. Make sure you're using those tools to your advantage. Set measurable goals. So I think Katie Cerrone is the one who posted in, the, in Project Fearless last week about or this week, I think even, about, you know, setting your goal and then realizing and figuring out what you need to do to get there. You know, if I said to everybody, I'm going to be 15 star elite coach, you know, by the end of this year, that's great. And that is my goal. But I, when I look at it that way, it is so overwhelming. But when I break it down and say, okay, seven star by the end of February, eight star by this day in March, 10 star here, you know, 10 star by summit, um, this by this. And when I break it down in that way, it lets me know how many coaches I need to be signing each month, how many people I need to help, you know, get to their spot and who, how many people they need under them. It really helps me figure out what I need to be doing. So set those measurable goals and then tell your coach about them so that you're held accountable. Or if you don't know what your goal should be because you're brand new, then talk to your coach and they'll help you, you know, figure out a reasonable goal for yourself. Fail forward. You know, like I said, there's a learning curve. You don't need to know everything to get started. You just need to start. It's okay to fail. It's okay to put something up on Facebook and have it bomb. In fact, you learn from it. You just can repost. You can take it down, repost, and move on. Um, you know, if you're having a conversation with somebody and, you know, you said something, or it didn't go the way you wanted it to, or you just totally botched it because you vomited beach body all over them because you were excited, or you gave them like every ingredient, you know, you just are like, you know, Shakeology is, it comes in this flavor, this flavor, this flavor, and these are all the ingredients that are in it, and this superfood, and this superfood, and this superfood, and does this for you, and it costs this much, and you can get it in this kind of pack, or you can get it in this pack, and you vomited it all over somebody, and they got scared and left, don't worry about it. You can fix it. I promise you. There are star diamonds on this team 
who have shown me the conversations that they had in the beginning with their um, people who are now Star Diamonds. Um, and those people still signed up and are being successful. So it's not the end all be all. Failing is, you should celebrate your failures. It means that you actually learned something and you can improve and you can move forward. All right, success leaves clues, take the hint. So if you see somebody in this business that's being successful, ask them what they're doing. If you see somebody in this business that's successful, look at what they're posting on Facebook. Look at what they're posting on Instagram. Listen to them when they tell you something. You know, your coaches want you to succeed. I already mentioned that. Your coaches want you to succeed because we're a team. And when you succeed, they succeed and all of us succeed. So listen to them because they're not telling you to do something to be mean. They're not telling you to do something because they're bossy. They're telling you to do it because they know that's what's going to get you what you want. Be on team calls. And this is kind of preaching to the choir on this one because you guys are all here. But reiterate to your team how important it is to be on team calls. You get nuggets on team calls that you won't find anywhere else. The Team Panacea team calls, awesome. This team call, awesome. You will find things, you will relate to other people, there will be topics that are talked about that you go, oh, and it just hits home and you never thought of it like that before. Or maybe somebody shares something that they're doing on Instagram that you didn't know about. Or maybe somebody is sharing something that they're doing on Facebook that you didn't know about or you never thought to do. Don't miss team calls. It's how you grow as a team. It's how you feel like a community. And it's how you, you, you learn more about your business. And it's free to you. So jump on there and make sure that your coaches know how important it is. Attend events. You know, your Super Saturdays. Summit is coming up. Is everybody registered? Summit is a place where you get to learn from corporate. You get to learn from top 10 coaches and 15 star diamond coaches. And they get to sit there and tell you exactly what they're doing in their business to get where they are and have gone, you know, millionaire earners in three years. It's also an awesome spot to sit there and really take in everything you've done this year and celebrate with your team. Recognition going across stage, you'll be walking across stage in front of 20,000 people. I mean, that is crazy. And if recognition is your thing, which I hate recognition, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it feels good to know you worked that hard and people are congratulating you and recognizing it. And it's an awesome time to spend with your team and not just this team here. I know a lot of us get together often and I love that. And I want us to get together more often. Attending events also means coming to those things where we get to know each other, coming to the brunch, you know, going on outings together, getting together often. When you have a group of people that are on a team that know each other really well, you form friendships and bonds that are unbreakable. And when you have a bond with somebody that's that tight, you don't want to let them down and they don't want to let you down. And I can promise you, you'll build depth in your business because of that. And you'll succeed because of that. Um, and these are the events that change your business. Summit will change your business. You will leave there so pumped and so excited and with this new energy and all these new ideas, you'll go out there and you'll crush it and you'll start crushing your business. And for those of you who are already crushing it, you'll crush it times 10. And you, honestly, I wanted to hit home on this too. As long as you don't quit, you will not fail. So the only way you can fail in this business is if you give up on yourself. If you don't listen to your coaches and what they tell you to do and you stop doing whatever they tell you to do. And there's other things that can happen that will make you feel like that. I know people can be Debbie Downers. I know people can say nasty things to you. Um, people can be haters and tear you down. But you have to look at the source and remember who is saying something to you. Do they have what you want? Or does your coach have what you want? Or does their coach's coach have what you want? You know, for me, I didn't care anymore what anybody else thought because I knew it was up to me to get what I wanted. And I knew that Chris had what I wanted. You know, he makes over half a million dollars a year. He gets to be at home with his kids. So does his wife. They get to travel whenever they want. They get to do whatever they want. I want that lifestyle. He's telling me what to do. Okay, I'll listen to him. I'm not going to listen to the naysayers and the people who want you to quit because they're too fearful to do it themselves. And, you know, if you're having thoughts like that, if you're worried about what other people think, or if you're fearful about reaching out, here's the other thing. That's a big fear. People are fearful about reaching out. But a lot of the times you signed on because you wanted to help somebody, but then you're afraid to talk to them. Well, how are you going to help them if you don't talk to them? And 
I can tell you that most of the people I've signed up in this business that are working in are not mad at me for helping them change their lives. In fact, they're pretty happy about it. So don't be afraid, but if you are, tell your coach so they can help you through it and they can recommend personal development books and things like that to help you through it as well. All right, work, Facebook, work. I thought it was appropriate to put RuPaul there. Um, so I have a video in the file section of Project Runway. Or Project Runway, see? Runway, work, get it? <laughs> Project Fearless. And it's all about how to work Facebook. And, you know, so here's how you work Facebook. Post three to five times daily. You know what? Brand yourself and post daily so that people know what you're doing. And then it makes your conversations a lot easier. And when you're friending people, they can come and look at your page and go, oh, this is what this person's all about. She loves dogs. She loves skiing. She loves traveling. She works out. She's fit. She's healthy. She loves running challenge groups. Guess what's going to happen when you post all that stuff all the time? You're the first person that's going to come to their mind when they think, I've gained some weight and I need some help. Also, if you start a conversation with them out of the blue, it's going to be a lot easier when they go, um, yeah, I saw you did that. You know, I was thinking about reaching out to you. And the other thing is, is that as you're building your audience and you're posting three to five times daily, you're building your engagement on Facebook and you're going to be seen in the newsfeed more often. And then your challenge group posts, people like them. And there you go. Warm leads to reach out to for new coaches and new customers. Know your audience. So this is a biggie. Know who your audience is and know how they behave. And if you don't know how to do that, there's a really easy way to check. Test out posting things at different times of the day and see when you have the most engagement usually. So you can go right down through your newsfeed and you can look at times of days that you've, that you've posted and you can say, okay, I usually get a ton of likes at 11 a.m. or I usually get a ton of likes at this time. And then save that time for when you're going to put a challenge group post. But continue to post throughout the day. The other thing is, as I said, three to five times daily, and you think, I might annoy my audience if I do that. Well, guess what? They don't see everything that you post. Unless there's somebody who likes your stuff all the time and comments on your stuff all the time, they're not seeing every single post that you do. And you're not going to annoy them. Because Facebook has an algorithm that allows your post to go into the newsfeed for them to be seen. So know your audience. You're not going to annoy them by posting a lot. But know your audience, too, and what they like. So what types of posts do you put up that they really like? Do you post pictures of food and that gets the most engagement? Do pictures of your dog get the most engagement? Um, do selfies get the most engagement? Like what on your page resonates with your audience? What did they like? And then also be thinking too just about ways that you can post challenge groups and post things that will resonate with them. So, you know, when I have a specific audience in mind and say it's moms that I'm friends with, I probably wouldn't post in the beginning of the morning when I know that they're all getting their kids up ready for school or, you know, dealing with breakfast time and all that stuff. I probably will post later at night when I know that most of their kids are in bed and they've finally sat down after making dinner and doing everything that they needed to do for the day and, you know, got home, did homework, did all that stuff. So I'll probably post a bit later. And then I would post something that has to do with their life, you know, like, you know, are you sick of, of sitting down finally for the first time at nine o'clock at night and having time to yourself and that's the only time of the day you have time for yourself? You know, here's a way that you can have more freedom. That was the worst post ever, but I'm just saying, you understand what I mean. Post to your audience. Say something that your audience will relate with. For me, you know, we have a lot of, I have a lot of friends that are younger, you know, under the age of 30. And so I know that Gen Y doesn't like nine to five jobs. They don't want to sit behind a desk, they don't, you know, in a cubicle all day. They want to own their own lives, but a lot of the time they don't know what to do. And I know that I didn't want to live like that. And so that's something that people really relate to. And I'll put that on my page and I get a ton of likes. So know your audience. Brand yourself. So we already talked about that a little bit. But brand yourself means figure out those five to six things that make you uniquely you and that's going to make you stand out and why people will want to follow you and what makes you interesting and post about it. And if you need some information on how to figure out how to brand yourself, watch that video that's in the file section of Project Fearless by Danielle Katz that's called Branding. Um, so try, try again. I talked about that a little bit too when I was talking about fail forward. If you post something on Facebook, it's not permanent. Take it down and post again if it didn't work. It could have been the wording. It could have been the picture. Test it out. You know, Facebook experts do that all the time. Um, we do it with ads. We do it with posts. 
You know, you don't always get it right the first time and that's okay. It doesn't matter. Try again. It's forgiving. Jab and hook, but hook at least three times a week. So your jabs are those posts that are just things that have to do with your brand. They can be funny. They can be, you know, questions. They can be things about your day. Your hook, your hook should be a challenge group post or your hook should be something that talks about the business, coaching, um, Shakeology, a program, that sort of thing with a call to action. That is your hook. So you have to jab enough times that you can post a hook at least three times a week so that you can be bringing in people often. Oops, sorry. I think, okay, always friend new people. We already talked about that. And then every post is a chance to connect. So just keep that in mind. We already talked about that with relating. All right, I am not special. And neither is any other successful coach in this business, this team, Team Panacea. None of us are successful. I mean, none of us are, are special. We're all successful. There is nothing about me that's different than you. The only thing that may be different from somebody who isn't succeeding is that they're not doing those vital behaviors consistently. The people who are doing this business and are successful aren't special. They're just consistent. And they listen to the coach that went before them. So stop making excuses. You know, stop thinking somebody else is better than you or that, you know, they've got more time than you or, oh, they don't have kids or, oh, they don't have a job or, oh, they don't have this. There's people of all walks of life in this business. There are people who own their own practice and have five children at home. There are partners at law firms. There are people who are servers at restaurants. There are people who work in social media with just nine to five jobs. There are salespeople who are on the road all day long and all of them are successful and all of them are busy people, but they're making their business a priority and they're doing those vital behaviors consistently. And just start. Ryan had an awesome call a couple weeks ago. That again is in the archives in the Project Fearless um, file section. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. But, you know, just start. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. You know, the greatest freedom is the freedom you get by not caring what others think. What they think doesn't determine where you go in life. What you do determines where you go in life. And so if you have fears about that, get rid of them, you know, find something that helps you through that. It could be Gabrielle Bernstein. It could be the book. What's it called? Start. Start. You think I would have known that. Um, projection is perception, you know, so don't project your own fears onto other people when you're talking to them. If that's the case, step away. Don't prejudge. Come back and start your conversation again. You can, only, you can only control what you're doing. And what, you, what you're doing is those three vital behaviors and starting those conversations. You can't control what happens afterwards, so don't worry about it. Just start it knowing that if you start having these conversations often, it will become easier. It will become more like second nature. You know, posting to your Facebook page will become second nature. You won't even think about it. But you have to start doing it, and you have to start doing all of these things. And the last thing I was just going to say is when you're feeling helpless, help someone. When you're feeling down about this business, help someone. Reach out, start a conversation, because I can guarantee you the universe will send somebody to you that says, hey, I'm ready. I want to sign up. I'd love your help. And, you know, that happened actually to Ryan the other day. He and I were on the phone and he was talking about how his regular, you know, job is making him feel a bit down and negative and sucking the energy from him. And when he gets home, he, you know, sometimes that trickles into, you know, his life here and how he'd really like to fix that. And so um, he was feeling down too about how he didn't have any success club points yet in the month. And, you know, we had a conversation about concentrating on helping people. So if he's at work and his boss is being a jerk or his coworkers, all they do is bitch and complain, you know, what can he do to make that better? He can tell first of all, I'm to stop complaining to him because that doesn't help anything and protect himself that way. But the other thing he can do is focus on helping people. So if somebody has bed bugs, what can Ryan do? He can help them by selling them tech service and sending them over there. If somebody has mice, if somebody needs to protect their restaurant, you know, all of that stuff, he gets to help them and he needs to focus on helping people and helping clients. And then when he comes home, he needs to focus on helping people and helping coaches. And as long as you're staying in that mindset, 
the negativity won't flow in and the universe will reward that. And as soon as he changed his mindset, as soon as we got off the phone, he got a message from somebody who immediately signed up as a coach right then and there saying, Hey, you know what? I'm ready. What's the deal? And signed up right then and there. Just from that simple mindset, that simple change in heart that I'm going to concentrate on helping people that was sent his way. Um, so to sum it all up, start, just start doing it. Start having conversations, start friending people, start posting to Facebook, start doing the vital behaviors consistently, start listening to your coach Start reaching out to your coach, block the negative out and just do it. And you will be sex successful and it will be worth it. I promise you that, you know, and I just thought the summing thing was pretty funny because we all joke about how I'm bad at math, but you know, just do it. It'll be worth it. I promise you, you know, it can seem like a lot at times. That's when you reach out to your team for support. Um, but don't quit.